What's up everyone, welcome to today's video, welcome to the Video Game Fight School channel, thank you very much for tuning in. Punk vs. Tokido, EVO 2024, they both played in the winner's top 24, and Punk won, but it was not an easy game to just win. Tokido was a very aggressive player, in fact, at one point was Punk's nemesis, if you go back and you know watch EVO 2017, where Punk and Tokido basically matched up. At that, uh, you know, grand final, Punk was playing from the loser side, so it had a lot of work to do. However, Tokido was very dominant, and Akuma was very strong. Karin was also strong, basically kind of a game changer. Punk used Karin to wash a lot of the Street Fighter professional roster. But Punk also said, and, you know, this is his account, that in the practice rounds, when they were basically, you know, practicing and playing one another in the hotel room, that Tokido looked like he was just super dominant. Tokido, in my mind, is an assassin. He's got this look of, man, I will wash and destroy if I can get one opportunity to get in or whatever it is. Or if you make one mistake or if I make one particular calculated, it is, he will nuke your health bar. That's for sure. So if you're playing against Tokido, I don't know how many professionals play him, but I think one thing I saw with Punk's game was that Punk was able to match his aggression. Keep in mind that just a few weeks before EVO, the World Cyber Games competition went on. Team USA versus Team Japan versus Team Korea, I think. And behold, ladies and gentlemen, Punk also met Tokido in almost a similar fashion. In fact, almost too similar because if you look at the EVO Top 24, they played in the exact same stage. Now, I don't know if the folk at EVO saw it and were like, yeah, or whatever. I mean, that's something. They, maybe it's both of them, their favorite stage. But it was very interesting and uncanny to see. And believe you me, the only similarities between both games is that Punk is literally throwing out drive impact like crazy. For some reason, Tokido is not really responding to it. Perhaps maybe Punk's, um, I don't know, maybe he, he played a little unpredictably in both games. But these you know, particular trends, to me, they stood out very well when I went back in reviewing both games. In fact... There was a very now there was one instance where Punk did one drive impact against Tokido trying to get him a wall splat, but Tokido was already in burnout and then Punk did it again. <laughs> it was weird. <laughs> you see, Punk just literally throws it out here at Evo, and even here in uh, this particular uh, World uh, Cyber Games, he just literally throws it out. Like, let me see if I can find. I mean, I can probably scroll through and find where Punk literally just throws out a drive impact. I mean, I think here or so. There we go. He just, he just, I mean, bro, it's like you're watching the exact same game. I mean, it is two similar players. And these are the trends that I see. However, there's something that I wanted to make note of and layer. Shout out to all of you who watched my last video, by the way. I didn't think we were going to get so many people watch that video. And that was how Punk won EVO 2024. Punk won EVO 2024 by, in my opinion, taking his time to analyze the information on the screen and ensuring that his drive meter was sufficient for a cami player now many of you know if you are going to play cami you really have to be smart about how you use your drive meter because you actually have to be on the verge of burnout to be able to deal the kind of damage that she does her biggest hold up is the drive meter the developers have basically found a way to you know clip the character in a way where she's not overpowered so she does burn a lot of drive meter in order for you to be able to maximize what she's about However, there's been something that I noticed, and I men mentioned it in my video on how Punk won EVO, was that he took the time to keep his drive meter as conserved as he possibly could, and it took him such a long way. No doubt about that, that such, you know, a change in his play really did not only win him, you know, this World Cyber Games uh, title, which it was a team effort, but he really did you know, do a lot of work here in terms of taking, you know, a lot of the players on and, you know, defeating them. It not only won him CEO, it also came in and won him some pivotal games in EVO as well as the EVO Championship. Now, again, if we look at this Punk Tokido match, Punk was hardly, hardly in burnout. In fact, he was more in burnout, and I said this in my last video, in his grand finals game than he was on average on many other games that we saw on stream. 
I saw somebody say, you know, yeah, they beat Punk in the first to five. It's about understanding how Street Fighter is meant to be played. I agree with you, you know, and you're a phenomenal player. If you could beat Punk in the first to five, I couldn't do it. I play Zangief, and I'm not, lit, I'm not, I'm not close to a good Zangief player. So that's great that you're able to do that. However, in the competitive scene, you know, everybody kind of understands, you know, the way your the way another player is going to play because they're labbing simply against that player. Number one and number two. It's different stakes, you know, when they're playing on these stages and everything. But, you know, that didn't necessarily mean anything, you know, for, to for Tokido. But that's what we call living room for error in terms of one player versus the other. However, Punk's meter remained, in my opinion, abundant. So even with these two games being played similarly in the way both players, you know, behave and the way both players basically act, there is one string and one theme there is. Tokido was more in burnout. Oh, he reacted to that bad boy. Look at that. Look at that. He reacted to that and smoked him. Right? That was, that's one where Tokido reacted. I think <laughs> Punk was basically getting too happy with those and messed around and found out. But at the end of the day, Punk stayed very, very robust in his meter. In fact, let's do this. If you can see, look on Punk's, you know, burn meter. And he only burns out when he, you know, in my opinion, anyways, he, maybe desperation in this particular scene. And Tokido blocked it uh, with that uh, drive impact. And he didn't go into burnout because, yeah, whatever. Right. And we look at his his uh, his drive meter. He's barely, 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 uh, you know, in trouble. Now, there are some instances where, you know, if he burns out like here, he basically pretty much overextended himself. And it wasn't until the combo basically hit him, but Tokido basically burned himself out, right? But he knew he was going to get the win. So these are some trends that I'm seeing in some of these, you know, fighters and some of their games that, you know, are very interesting because the World Cyber Games, uh, you know, matchup and the, the matchup between he and Tokido, I think those, those two particular games would have basically given us some information as to how this was going to go down. Now, there are conversations about Ken getting a nerf and also, uh, you know, Kami getting a, uh, a buff. Well, it's very interesting because Kami's so-called buff was basically with one of her moves. And she also got a nerf as well in, say, another area. However, I think Punk understood that this nerf, which was a blessing in disguise, I think, I think it really helped Punk take a very close look at the character and say, okay, this is the character's biggest weakness. And now they've been, you know, granted one more strong area. Possibly I need to figure out a way to compensate for this character's weakness and go into evil because that same thing also worked in CEO. We're going to look at some CEO videos as well. And I'm going to show you guys a trend. I saw, I saw it in CEO and I was like, oh, this is, if, he, if he maintains this, this is insane. I saw the exact same trend again, even in WCG. And again, here we are. Evo was already, you know, done and Punk is already the winner, right? So new game, new rules. No longer are we playing with the rules of Street Fighter, you know, five where Akuma was a mess to deal with. And, you know, nobody really had too much of a response for Akuma at this time, right? And so now with Street Fighter six season two, I think everybody now understands that the dev meant it when they said, bro. Watch that drive gauge. <laughs> Watch that drive gauge. You act out, you will find out real quick because it puts you at a disadvantage. However, some players still play aggressively even without drive gauge. I mean, you see big, you see Angry Bird and Big Bird. They'll play crazy. Their Rashid and Ken, you know, um, will still put them in a you know in a precarious position. But those two characters, Rashid and Ken, have a lot of tools that even in burnout. They can still be fine if they have their resources for their critical arts, uh, be it a level uh, you know, two or level three or whatever it is. They are there. There's some characters that can still do that. They can still play as if drive meter is not an object in that regard. So I wanted to go ahead and make this video and just talk about these two games and how they, if you juxtapose them over one another, those are the trends that you're going to see. And it's not going to be too surprising how Punk basically was able to take, you know, Tokido out at the more critical time and, and continue to advance forward. Now, it could have gone anyway. <laughs> Both players are, in my opinion, 
I, I couldn't tell you who the better player is. I think it's just on a given day, depending on the circumstances, you're going to see some real streaks of brilliance, you know, come out of both players. Tokido being the assassin that he is and Punk being the sniper that he can be in many cases, you know, these two basically leave you at, an, at, a, at a guess. So you can't really tell what in the world is going on in that regard. So thanks for watching the video. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section. Appreciate you guys' time and audience, and hopefully we'll talk pretty soon in another one. Peace out.